up YouTube, Brian here. Today we're making a DIY auto water change system that you could do in any suburban, probably any house really, that has a floor drain near your tank or any kind of drain that you're willing to dedicate to this, at least part time. Or I mean at least partially. So what you're looking at right now is the first step. This pipe is cool water, it's a PVC pipe. This thing is called a saddle valve. I just put it on there. You drill a hole in the top of the pipe, there's a little rubber gasket right there, two screws that clamp the valve down onto the pipe, and then there's just a simple turn valve at the top, and then you thread your hose, your water line, onto a nut and screw it into the side. So turn the water off in your house, the water main, open a sink to drain all the pressure from the pipes, drill a hole in the top of your pipe, go get one of these at Home Depot for a couple bucks, or Lowe's or whatever, put a rubber gasket there, put the valve on, tighten these screws, put your line into the nut, follow the instructions on the valve package, it's really easy. Once you've done all that, get a bucket, turn the water back on, make sure you don't have any leaks, and then I ran this hose up over these vents, over here, over that, down, down, down by the pothos, into the trellis, and down to one of these little things, which is a drip irrigation valve. Right now I have the water turned off because I don't have the drain put in the tank yet. I wanted to film this segment about um, running the water line first. So you can turn that little knob, They come, I got them on Amazon, the package like this, it's like two bucks or something for five. Um, you just stick them in, you can open that little valve and it will let out a drip, or the more you open it, the faster it will come out. So this is going to put water in the tank. How is water going to come out of the tank? Down at this end, I'm about to do something insane because I don't really have another option and drain the water in this tank down pretty low and then drill drill the side right here for a bulkhead with the fish still in the tank. I know that's really dumb. Don't do this at home. This could lead to absolute disaster, but I have nowhere else to put the fish except for a bucket temporarily with a sponge filter and the way I'm thinking about it is uh, all the fry are too small for me to catch so I can't get them out of the tank and if this tank shatters then I'm screwed anyway like I don't have anywhere else to put the fish I'm not going to spend enough money to set up a whole nother tank so this is going to be the moment of truth. As I said, I, I understand that this is incredibly stupid and risky, but that's how it's going to get done. So we have this thing I made. This is a bulkhead right here, the gray part that I got on Amazon, again, for very cheap. I don't even remember how much, bucks or something. So it's reverse threaded. This thing screws on the outside of the glass and the gasket part goes on the inside of the glass. Then I have this fitting which fits into the end of this tube, which then I have running down under the table, through a hole in the wall back there, and to a floor drain that's in the utility furnace space back there. So this is just a 90 degree elbow. This doesn't actually, uh, because this bulkhead is reverse threaded, this isn't actually screwed in right here very well. I had to like just wedge it in there and it does leak. If I take this to the sink and plug the drain part on the right there with my palm <coughs> and fill it with water, <coughs> excuse me, it starts to drip from right here where I'm tapping with my finger. However, that's going to be underwater inside the tank so I don't really care. Same with right here, I haven't glued this or anything because it's going to be in the water. So if it leaks a little bit, the water is just going to go back into the tank, no big deal. This on the other hand was also leaking, the 
the right end there, so I don't know if you can see that. I just um, glued it together with some PVC cement. I'm waiting for that to cure so that I can test it again and make sure it's not going to leak on the outside over here. Then to drill the hole, you need something like this. A for this particular bulkhead, you need one and three eighths inch hole saw with a diamond coating. As you can see on the package, if uh, I had more hands and I could focus the camera, <laughs> there you go. You can see right there, it's suitable for drilling glass. Um, I originally bought one at the hardware store. It was like $25 or $30 or something. And then I went online once I knew better what I needed actually and got this for like, I think 15 bucks, something like that. Obviously you can use it for a long time, but um, I didn't have one, so I had to buy one. And then I, also the last part of this is gonna be these, which are screens to catch lint from a dryer vent or something like that. I don't know, I just found that I was looking for some kind of little screen to keep any fry and or debris from getting into the overflow here and clogging. So I'm going to stick this inside another one so that it's double mesh because it is it's it is like big enough that the smallest fry could slip through there if they really wanted to. And I really don't want to lose any fry at this point. So got two of these in one little package. It was like 2 bucks again. Everything for this was pretty cheap individually altogether. I think I spent like maybe like 30 or 40 bucks and the majority of that was the drill bit so anyway I'm gonna put two of these one inside the other I'm gonna slide it over the end of this and scrunch it down so that there's a screen surrounding this and no hopefully no fish will get through and go out the overflow into the drain so yeah first step was to set up that water line the next step is gonna be well, well the next step was setting all this stuff up you could do that later, but I did it first just to make sure everything was going to fit and all that. So now, oh crap, I realized I just made a mistake. Before I glued this, I was going to put it in to the tank and draw a circle using it as a guide to know where to drill the hole exactly. I can still do that. Now it's just going to be more difficult because I'm going to have to stick it in there and then look at it from this side and just kind of like eyeball the edge of the the hole using uh, using this as a guide, like a little stencil. So I shouldn't have done that first. I should have drawn my hole with Sharpie on the glass first and then done that. So there's one mistake you can avoid. But uh, yeah, that's the general process. I'm going to go off camera. And because I can't film while I'm trying to do this, I have nobody to help me right now. So we're going to go off camera. I'm going to try to get this hole drilled, which is going to be insane. I'm going to use the python to drain some of the water out of the tank, like I said. And then I've never drilled a glass before, much less vertical glass, much less of active tank with fish in it. So... I'm incredibly nervous about this. Uh, you need to check and make sure that your tank is not tempered glass before you drill it. If it's tempered glass, it's going to shatter into a million pieces. I've been looking. I called the manufacturer for this tank. They couldn't tell me. I was scouring online. I found several people, including one person with the same exact tank as this, who drilled it, had pictures. Uh, confirming that it wasn't tempered glass from a couple months earlier this year, so I know it's probably the same production line and everything like that. Uh, but a lot of times, like the bottom pane of glass on an aquarium will be tempered, but not the sides. If you can't find out from research, you can buy a polarized lens and use that to like look at the look at the glass through the polarized lens with a light behind it and. If you arrange it right, you should be able to see like a diamond lattice pattern in glass if it's polarized. So anyway, those are the main things you need to keep in mind. Um, maybe right before I drill it, I'll show you my drill setup.
how I'm going to do it. And then uh, after that, I'll go off camera again, we'll drill it, and we'll come back and see the final product. Alright everybody, we're back. Um, as you can see, I've drawn a line in Sharpie right there. Hopefully you can see that using this nut as a guide. Which means that this drain is going to line up basically like that. And the top of the water level is going to be right there. I got the right size hole saw on my drill ready to go. Water drain down to below the hole. Next, um, I got to drill the hole. This may be the dumbest thing I've ever done in my hobby. If this tank breaks, who doggy? Hey. Anyway, if it works, it's gonna be awesome. If it breaks, I am gonna hate myself for being so dumb. Anyway, you guys just get to sit back and laugh either way. So what you do when you're drilling glass, apparently, you've never done it before, but watch some videos, that's usually how I learn how to do things that I've never done before, is you would start at a 90 to get a little uh, furrow, I guess, in the glass, a little scratch, so that the, the saw doesn't wander when you put it on perpendicular to the, the glass. Is that the right word? Parallel, perpendicular, who knows? against the glass flat. <laughs> so you start get a little ridge, a groove, and then you go, you pull off, line it up, go like that. The whole time, you need to keep it wet to avoid too much friction. So I'm gonna have a squirt bottle, probably have my little three-year-old daughter assist me. Cause she would love an excuse to squirt water everywhere, I'm sure and have her squirt the glass while I do the drilling and I'll just have a towel down there to catch the water and uh... oh man, this is making me nervous if you'll know what happens in the next clip when I come back it may be a scene of devastation or uh... if not, we're gonna have a sick little auto water change system for you to check out we'll be back Stay tuned. Yeah, boy. Yeah, baby. That's what we like. Success. There is a hole in my aquarium. Dicker, dicker, dicker. Uh, however, I mean, it's not perfect, I guess. There's, uh, some, like, shat light shattering, I guess, on the inside edge. I'm hoping that doesn't cause any leaks. Next step is to rig up this baby with the screens and then put it in, tighten it down, raise up the water level, see if there's any leaks, and then uh, turn it on. So we'll be back. Alright guys, girls, peoples of the YouTube. We have a cheap Chinese drip valve, which is dripping and leaking, but that's fine. We've filled the tank back up. Over here we have our overflow. And I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but of course, immediately, all the fry have come to investigate and are hovering just around the edges of this overflow, making me very nervous that they're gonna get sucked through the mesh. And, uh down the drain. Hopefully they're smarter than that. We will see how long this takes to start overflowing with like just that little drip going in. At some point my next video is going to be a calibration video where I'm going to use a milk, a gallon milk jug to determine the flow rate of the drip valve and then set it accordingly so that it changes water every 100% water change every two or three days probably. One thing to keep in mind with this guys is you don't want to change the water too quickly unless 
you're using water from a temperature controlled source at least if you live somewhere with seasons like me right now it's quite cold outside here in Ohio I don't know the exact temperature today but it's been in the 30s or high 20s lately <clears throat> which means this water is pretty cold it's much colder than the water in the tank so you need to introduce it at such a rate that it's not going to drastically change the temperature in the tank also make sure you have a heater to maintain a copacetic environment for your fishies if you're doing this I mean you don't always need a heater but if you're trying to do what I'm doing you do so I mean everything seems to be working I tested for leaks here's what the other side looks like I put a little clamp on there to make sure nothing leaks I poured a bunch of water through it I didn't see any leaks and the other end of this hose just goes right into my sub pump sump pump reservoir for the house so uh, yeah that's that. Um, next video, like I said, we'll do an update and talk about calibrating it and just a general tank update and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. I know this was a long video, but uh, hopefully you found this helpful. I'm really excited about this. I've never had an automatically water change, an auto water changing tank before. <laughs> if I could speak English, that would be great. So this is awesome. No more buckets, no more pythons, no more anything like that. And plus it's going to help my fish grow much more quickly and have a constant source of fresh water, which is, you know, it's kind of wasteful for the environment, but it's great for the fish. Since this is supposed to be a breeding for profit tank, I want these guys growing as quickly as possible. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, please like, please subscribe. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.